24 hours ago that Mr. Foreman was complaining of the unseasonably warm weather. Well, the god must have heard him because things have turned cold. So chilly, in fact, that somebody needs to wear her new swan dry. Our first destination is that way. So that means that the wind and the waves are at least partially in our favor. From our camp at Lost Spring, it's a two and a half mile paddle to the northern shore of Chamberlain Lake where our portage begins. Closing in on our destination, we see the iconic bald eagle soaring across the treetops. And closer still, we find the water levels are becoming critically low. The situation does not improve and soon the canoe needs to be pushed. We struggle past yellow legs enjoying the muddy shallows and dashing about for small snacks. Canada geese graze upon the flats as we slide on by through the mud until things get really sticky. I think we're running out of water, Wilms. We're going to have to take our stuff out here. Yeah, but I think we need to investigate first. Yeah. Maine is moose country, and while we haven't seen any of these humongous herbivores yet, there's definitely evidence that they're here. So our first objective leaving the canoe back there is to find the path that'll cross over into Eagle Lake. We want to find the, the easiest possible access before we go lugging a 100 pound canoe and various paraphernalia with it. Found it! The old tramway. So I think that the path is just through there. Oh, this doesn't look like it's going to be fun. We've decided to undertake this mission in multiple stages and short stints. The distance and load will be the same, but it might be easier psychologically. Leaving some of the gear in the canoe, we now attach our all-terrain trolley to the underside of our little boat. Back up. There. This whole sequence is a bit of an experiment. Don't yet know how it's going to go. It's time to put our trolley to the test and venture into the forest. As we proceed down this rickety track, the trolley wheels drop into ruts, causing the canoe to smash into Wilms' hip and legs, giving her a good bashing over a very short distance. It's already time for a rest. However, just beyond the tree line, we discover relics from an early chapter in the region's logging history. These huge boilers produced steam to power the tramway that transported logs from Eagle Lake in the north across the Chamberlain Lake where we are now. The huge belt rotated this gear setup which in turn drove that huge notch wheel that hauled a cable like you'd see on a ski lift. Carts mounted on rail tracks were attached to this cable and carried the logs across the land bridge between lakes. The system began operation in 1903 and ran for only six years. Our little trolley is man-powered and takes a little effort to move across the bumpy trail, although having a trail to start with is a blessing. Navigating that thick bush beyond would be a difficult endeavour indeed. Oh, we're here on the edge of Eagle Lake at the end of our rather arduous portage and what do we find here in the forest? Locomotives. Two of them. It's what you'd expect, really. It's a very unique experience finding these two oil-burning, steam-driven locomotives just sitting out in the middle of the woods. These ran from 1927 to 1933, hauling logs south for 12 miles to a place called Umbazooksis Lake, which linked up to a western branch of the Penobscot River, where logs could be floated down to the mills in the south. Just beyond the tree line is the shore of Eagle Lake, close to the end of our lengthy portage. At this final stage, we have to haul up a little hill that turns out to be a raised rail line cluttered with ruined rail carts, cables, and wreckage. Once 
Once over the line, it's a short but steep downhill haul leading to a very muddy little canal. There's a bit of grunting to get the boat through the deep sticky mud. Then getting farther along the shallow canal isn't much easier. That was tough. <laughs> yeah, don't tell Wilms. She thinks I thought it was a piece of cake. Eagle Lake stretches out before us and our destination is Farm Island in the foreground. After the long haul, we're ready to be back on the water, especially Cricket who's had quite a long day. The lakes are home to the common loon, a sizable, chunky bird that dives for fish and possesses a distinctive, mournful call. That would have been my fingers if I was holding that. <laughs> Where'd you learn that trick? A friend Geo taught us that trick and he learned that from a Girl Scout, which means Man grows wiser faster if he listens to women. The campsite on Farm Island is well sheltered amongst the forest, which is a good thing as dark clouds begin to gather and from the northwest the sky sounds angry. While darkness descends over the Allagash, a tempest descends upon us. It's been a very long day. We only did about five miles worth of paddling, but that portage and everything that went with it took a long time and a lot of energy. It really uh, it wore all three of us out. So here we are, we're at camp, and uh, Mr. Foreman's bitching about the nice weather has brought this on. We've got pouring rain, we've got thunder, lightning, and to top it off, we only just put the fire on a little while ago and uh, dinner looks like it's either gonna be delayed or non-existent. Well, what I reckon, when the shit hits the fan, and it really looks grim, have a cup of tea. Oh, there's a bug in there. <laughs> that wasn't on the menu. That one went down. There's a lot in this, it's more of a soup than a brew. Well, a campfire has <laughs> been washed away. Get it the right way around. Ooh. So, we're going to attempt to cook sausages on the gas. They've been in there a while. We were supposed to eat them tonight. Aren't you, don't you want to give them a sniff? No. Oh. Okay. I think they'll do. That's not really sure. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Local wildlife. Trying to get in on the action. Look at that. Butterfly. We're going for the even heat method. I don't hold high hopes. Totally uninspired. The squall has left us with no fire and only partially cooked spuds. But we're just going to eat around the, uh, the, the raw bits and, um, and live with it. I said yours isn't even cooked at all. This one's at least partially cooked. I might have another cup of tea.
We survived the deluge and most of us are up and moving around. We're just waiting for Cricket to get out of bed. Oh, speak of the devil. The fall colors are really starting to show and from out of the woods comes a diminutive visitor called a ruffled grouse. This stumpy chap's future is probably fairly bright out on an island, considering it's hunting season and the grouse are highly prized. An anxious party member has retreated back to the tent. The wind has picked up a little earlier than normal with whitecaps on the lake. Cricket fears today could go a little wonky. Regardless, we need to drain our waterlogged craft after last night's big rain. This is where a chunky sponge is a handy asset to soak up those final dregs. Going to continue our crossing of Eagle Lake. There's a bit of wind this morning, white caps. And our direction is that way. The waves are going to hit us in the side. We're going to maybe attempt a tentative zigzag into the waves and then going with them to avoid us, avoid those waves hitting us on the side. So we'll see how we go. And if it's a little too dangerous, we'll retreat back here. Leaving the lee side of the island, we're immediately greeted by a stiff wind and moderate sized waves that make progress slow and difficult. We've successfully negotiated the zig part of our zigzag. And from here, we're gonna go with the waves and make your way across that shoreline where it looks a lot more protected and a little safer. The worst, I hope, is behind us. How are you feeling about the whole project, Wilms? It's not so bad. I've definitely seen worse. Travelling back on the zag is with the wind and much easier, with a few protected pockets along the shore free of waves. Now we must pass through a channel to enter the northern portion of the lake. It's here that the world becomes a much more hostile place, with conditions going from bad to dangerous. Fearing a real risk of being swamped or overturned, we make an emergency landfall at Ziegler's camp on the east side. The campsite where we landed was quite uninviting, but Wilms discovers a much better spot down a little trail, flatter and protected from the howling winds. Cricket gives it the paws up. I'm getting my undercarriage completely drenched trying to restock our water supplies and an hour later I find there's a freshwater spring here at Ziggler's camp, making this exercise completely unnecessary. As the day progresses, it actually gets worse. Knowing we won't be paddling again today, Wilms wanders off collecting driftwood for a fire. Oh, you got it that time! You got it! The original plan for today was to do about 10 miles, but the weather had other plans. <laughs> <laughs> The weather had other plans and uh, the water was so rough that in the end we only made it about two miles which was not ideal but there's no way we would have made it the full 10. Even as the sun sets, the wind still howls, though it appears to have lost some of its edge. A new day may bring hope. 
Preparation for dinner begins as Wilms boils water for pasta and I cook the last of our sausages that haven't been chilled for quite some time, but have somehow managed to pass another sniff test. Quite worrisome. The wind doesn't whip up in the next hour or two, I think we might be in with a fighting chance to get going today. We start a chilly morning with some nourishing slop and posh coffee. Cricket's still in bed. Yeah. From this side of the camp, getting the canoe down to the water requires negotiating a steep bank. I'm, um... I'm a little worried about getting the canoe down that. I just don't know if I'm going to be strong enough to hold it. Well, we're going to find out. Okay. All right, I'm going to go out the back and Wilms, you'll be at the front holding onto that rope and cricket. You supervise. It's not the struggle we feared, and soon enough, we're off. North from Eagle Lake is another of several round ponds, the north end of which is bridged by a logging road. Even with the sun shining, it's quite a chilly day. Luckily, the winds stay low and it's a pleasant journey to High Bank Camp at the far end of Churchill Lake. Wilms busies herself around camp while Cricket and I try fishing the shallows with little luck. The little dog gets so bored, she even returns to camp for a nap. Unperturbed by failure, I move to deeper water and somehow get a hookup. The fish spits the hook, but the commotion brings back my fishing buddy in a flash, who has to be fished out of the drink and dumped unceremoniously into the boat. Cricket's lucky she didn't get eaten by the big bullfrog lurking below. Also on the sandy floor, a freshwater mussels gouging trench-like trails as they move about looking for food. Across the lake, the ranger from the nearby Churchill Dam station is on his way home to a secluded cabin hidden somewhere in the forest. The afternoon light fades out into a calm, lovely evening. Now that our fresh food is all pretty much gone, we're moving into pasta and sauces with some as dehydrated vegetables and then little additives like tuna and maybe even bacon perhaps. So we've had a lot of brews on the trip and we're a little worried we won't have enough gas to get us through to the end. So we're going to cook on the fire during the, the nice days just in case we run into a, a pissy shitty day where we can't have a fire and we don't want to be caught short with the gas. What's that stuff? That's powdered milk. And the other stuff is just that store-bought uh, instant um, pasta sauce. Creamy pesto tonight. Creamy pesto. Sounds very hippie-ish. Yeah, I'm going to call that done. All right then. And just like that, Bob's your auntie. We're eating gourmet, Tucker. That might be a stretch. I suppose gourmet means expensive, doesn't it? Means better than pasta and instant sauce. Well. In the next part of the adventure, we tackle the fast-flowing chase rapids where things go horribly wrong. We negotiate the ruined Long Lake Dam, meet a moose, 
and get burgled by an avian thief. We're challenged by low water levels and endure more of the stunning beauty of far northern Maine. Be sure to join us for part three of the Allagash Wilderness Waterway. <laughs>